friendship could be. My little pony. Until you all shared its magic with me. Big adventure. Tons of fun. A beautiful heart, faithful and strong. Sharing kindness. It's an easy feat. And magic makes it all complete. You have my Granny Smith is like, just another day in Ponyville. Scoodaloo may not be able to fly in the literal sense, but she can emulate it pretty well. Nice moves, kid. Nice moves. Congratulations, Senpai noticed you. Just need to find a way to spend some time with her. You know, so she can see more of my awesomeness. She certainly takes after Rainbow Dash. So Apple Bloom was gonna go camping with her sister, so she figures that the other two members of the CMC can come too, along with Rainbow Dash and Rarity. Rarity loves camping! I despise camping! Best pony. Applejack's going with her little sister, but you don't want to spend time with me. Oh boy, it's Sister Hoof's social all over again. Hey! Typical Rarity. So no Rainbow Dash yet, but she's going to meet them at the campsite. Are we there yet? The last thousand times you asked that, the answer was no. This time, it's actually yes. This scene feels awkward to me since I just did a follow-up video on Boast Busters. Then again, it's a well-established character flaw that Rainbow Dash does go a little overboard with showing off, so I guess it's okay. Just play it cool. <laughs> of course that would happen. She just made a chicken noise. Okay, that I didn't see coming. Looks like you'll be sharing a tent with me, huh? If that's okay with you. Sure, as long as you don't snore. You don't snore, do you? Nope. Meanwhile, Rarity is at her rarityest. You have got to be kidding me. I'm about to tell you the best story you ever heard. Is it about the time when Rarity had wings and then they got ruined and then you saved her from plummeting to her doom? I'm with Rarity, I don't want to hear that story either. So Rainbow Dash is about to tell a scary story. Scootaloo is pretending she's okay with it. The olden pony asked, Who's got my rusty horseshoe? You go! <laughs> I wasn't scared at all. <laughs> Knew you wouldn't be scared. But Apple Bloom doesn't care about impressing anyone. Anyway, they all go to bed and... <laughs> of course Rainbow Dash snores. Scootaloo starts to go to sleep, but... <laughs> It's the lady from the story Dash was telling. Who got my rusty horseshoe? Creepy. Who got my rusty horseshoe? Ah! Hey, wasn't that Princess Luna? <laughs> Rainbow Dash! Here you go! <laughs> Turns out it was a nightmare. I don't know about you, but I slept like a filly. Best night ever! Title drop? Wait, wrong episode. Oh boy, we're having a Ren and Stimpy moment. So Scootaloo has been hitching a ride on Rarity's mountain of luggage, but now that they've brought up making it to the next campsite before dark, suddenly she's a lot more active. Just ride ahead to make sure the path is clear. But she didn't get much sleep last night, so this isn't gonna end well, is it? <laughs> I love how she propels herself with her little wings. Scootaloo ends up falling asleep at the wheel, as it were, and ends up just caught up with everyone else. Way to go. Don't come this way! Meanwhile, she's jumping ten feet into the air with every little noise she hears. No need for tents tonight, y'all. And it turns out that they're not going to bother setting up the tents because they found a cave. Perfect. Be right back with lots of firewood from the not scary at all forest! Thanks. Rainbow Dash is kind of dense, isn't she? <laughs> See, there you go. It wasn't that bad. It's all I could find, because, you know... There aren't that many trees around here. Dash starts to tell a scary story, but Scootaloo takes over. There once was a really, really nice pony who lived in a bright and sunny land where there are rainbows every day. Yeah, that wasn't gonna happen. Back to Rainbow Dash. These very woods are haunted by the headless horse. Hey, you got that story from Twilight. If it doesn't have a head, then how in tarnation does this pony know where it's going? It's headless, not brainless. So where's its brain? I kind of love Applejack right now. They were never heard from ever again. Oh. <laughs> 
So it's bedtime, but naturally Skulu is afraid to go to sleep. We haven't even sung any campfire songs yet. You don't have to ask me twice. 99 buckets of oats on the wall! I liked it better in Stairmaster, where she technically had a good voice, she just didn't know how to control it. Now she's just flat out a bad singer. That's still a very big voice to come out of such a little pony, though. Zero buckets of on the wall! It's hard to pick a favorite character in this episode. Everyone is hilarious. Ah, uh, seems like you don't really want to go to sleep tonight. Is there some reason why? Finally, someone noticed, for all the good it does. I don't want to waste a single minute with sleep. <laughs> But Scootaloo does fall asleep, so time for another scary story-inspired nightmare. I love the stylized nighttime forest in Scootaloo's nightmares, by the way. If the headless forest catches me, I'm never gonna be heard from again! And I wanna be heard from! Hmm, the headless horse looks kind of familiar other than the lack of a head. And it's in front of the moon. Hmm. Yeah, of course that was Luna. You are so, so much better than the Headless Horse. Yeah, it's always better to have a head. I am the Princess of the Night. Thus it is my duty to come into your dreams. But when you wake, the thing that frightens you most will still exist. So it turns out that Scootaloo's nightmares were a response to her fear that she'd look bad in front of Rainbow Dash. Every pony must face them in their own way. But they must be faced, or the nightmares will continue. Boy, is that ever true. More about that in the recap. Face your fears! Princess Luna? So Scootaloo is awake now, but she thinks she hears the headless horse. So she books it. But just ends up getting herself into trouble. Dash to the rescue! here in the middle of the night! You're being kind of creepy now, Luna. It is time for you to face your real fears, Scootaloo. So Scootaloo apologizes and comes clean. I just wanted you to hang out with me and see how cool I was so you'd take me under your wing, teach me everything you know, and become like my big sister. But then you started telling those spooky stories and I got scared. Dash comes clean about something, too. First time I heard those stories, I was scared, too. I got over it because I realized pretty quick that if there was such thing as a headless horse, I could totally take it on. Of course you did. You're looking for some pony to take you under their wing, huh? I might be up for something like that. As long as you don't go falling into any more rivers in the middle of the night. Oh, surrogate big sister achieved. The next day... Last prayer to make it to the falls is a moldy carrot! If you insist. <laughs> it is so hot! Aw, even Rarity is having fun. They think they can beat the two of us. I wonder how many viewers were fooled into thinking Scootaloo is actually flying here. Uh-oh, it turns out that the old mare with the missing horseshoe was real. Here it is for pony's sake. Now take it and stop all your moaning. Thank you, and have a nice day. I love this show. <laughs> and so ends Sleepless in Ponyville. I like this episode a lot, but there's a lot to unpack here. First of all, it took us three seasons to get a Scootaloo episode. Fans had been speculating on her ever since they noticed that she's the only member of the CMC whose family hasn't been shown. And we're generally saying that she's an orphan who can't fly and turns to Rainbow Dash as a surrogate big sister. This one confirms that last one, but ignores the first two. I want to say that later episodes maybe hint at those, but we'll cross those bridges when we come to them. For some reason, fandom likes to, or at least used to like to, paint Scootaloo as this horrifically tragic character who puts up this brave front. It was common enough that it had a nickname, Scoot Abuse. Now that Scootaloo has more canon to her, I think it's died down, but it's funny how a fandom can show their love for a character by basically making that character suffer as much as possible. Either way, I always kind of like the idea of Dash being a big sister to Scootaloo, so I'm glad we finally got that here. Until this episode, Scootaloo was just a fan of hers, and it wasn't made clear how much they actually knew each other. We also finally get some more screen time for Luna that doesn't involve Celestia. The fact that she visits the dreams of ponies is kind of odd. It makes it seem like she has too much free time on her hooves. But it makes sense that she'd have more to do than just raise the moon every night. And this is something that the show will expand on later. Strange as it is, I like the idea that Luna can visit ponies in their dreams. I'm sure there's been plenty of fan art of her as Freddy Krueger. 
Speaking of which, I like the reveal that Scootaloo's nightmares were caused by her worry over not being able to impress Rainbow Dash. Dreams are interesting. I don't believe that they're prophetic or mystical or anything like that, but I do believe that they're the result of your subconscious trying to tell you something. For me, it seems like I'm most likely to have some kind of nightmare or stressful or weird dream whenever I'm stressed out about something in real life. Like my subconscious is trying to draw my attention to it so I'll deal with it head on. So yeah, great episode. I commented earlier on how none of the adults seem to notice that Scootaloo is having problems, but to be fair, Applejack and Rarity each has their own little sister to look after, and it's pretty in character for Rainbow Dash to be clueless. Credit to Applejack for at least noticing, even if she didn't really follow up on it. Next up is Wonderbolts Academy. See you then. Did you remember to pack? Oh, well, let's see who gets the last laugh when you're absolutely desperate to curl your lashes and you realize you didn't bring your eyelash curler. 